Hello. Today we'd like to talk about effective interest method of amortizing bond discounts and bond premiums. But what is a premium? A premium is a bond that sells for more than its face value because the market rate is less than the rate stamped on the bond, the, the stated or the contract rate. Do remember in this discussion that the bond is a liability. So uh, our firm is getting ready to borrow money. So as we go out to borrow money, um, this bond that we're selling um, sells for more than the face because um, the, the bond holders are going to get paid more interest than the market rate. Here's an example. Assume that we have a $700,000 bond. We're going out and trying to borrow $700,000. The bond has a rate on it of 12%, but today the market rate's only 10%. So you'd have to agree, um, as long as the lenders are sure we're going to repay, this is a pretty good thing. So we might be able to receive cash of $735,533, um, and that's our debit. But the liability, the amount we have to repay, is only $700,000. Therefore, the difference is what we call an adjunct liability, premium on bonds payable, and that amount is $35,533. A discount, on the other hand, occurs when the bond sells for less than the face amount because the stated rate on the bond is lower than the market rate. For example, again, let's assume that a $700,000 bond has a stated rate of 12%, but the market rate today is 14%. So this is not a real good deal for investors right now, especially not at $700,000. So what might happen is that we can only get $666,633 today when we sell these. So we debit that amount. On the other hand, the bond payable, the amount that we're going to have to repay later, is $700,000. The difference is a discount on the bond payable. We call this a contra liability. Uh, if liabilities typically have credit accounts, this has a debit account. Well, we've looked at both, and it would be a long video if we applied the effect of interest to both. So let's go ahead and apply it just to the, um, the discount, not to the premium. So, Remembering the example we just looked at, the discount of $33,367 is a contra liability. And I'm showing here that it is a 206, 207, 209, that's what the 20 question amount means. It really means it's a liability account on the chart of accounts. And this liability on the chart of accounts has a debit balance. Now, if instead of recording this as a liability, we tried to debit expense, and remember that's um, how we do debit um, common expenses. That's how we debit cleaning fees, um, advertising, etc. We show all that with debits. But if we tried to debit um, an expense account here, like interest expense, we would violate the accrual basis of accounting. The reason for this is that the bond, as we're going to see in a few minutes, last three years. So we can only take this discount and apply it to expense um, over the next three years. While it's simplistic, consider that the upfront cash we had to give to the lender because um, we're going to be paying less interest over the bond life. So. Go back, think about the journal entry that was done. We're going to owe $700,000, but we only got $667,000 and some change. And that's because um, 
it was almost as if we had to pay an upfront cash premium, collect less cash up front because we were going to be paying back later. The bond almost always, or bonds almost always, pay interest semi-annually. And they return the borrowed amount at the end, at maturity. You can make this assumption. You saw this in your principal's class. The same thing's true in your intermediate class. We need to um, make sure that we, in our academic examples, always treat um, the interest payment as semi-annually. Of course, in, in the real world, you would actually have to look at whether the bonds pay um, interest once a year, twice a year, etc. Also, before we can do effective interest, we have to know the bond's life. So in our example, we're going to assume that the bonds will mature in three years. We do this, we can set up a table like this one I've prepared. So this table has several columns. It has a date column. It has cash interest. This is the stated amount on the bond um, for the part of the period that we're actually going to pay interest. Then we have effective interest. This is the market rate of the bond um, times the carrying value, not times the face. Then, because it's a discount, we're going to be increasing the, the carrying amount every time. So the 666,633 that we start with as carrying amount will be the absolute lo lowest carrying amount we have. And as we amortize this um, discount, and by amortizing it, we mean as we change the discount from a liability to an expense or from a contra liability to an expense, we'll be raising the um, carrying amount toward the final value of 700,000. Well, let's look at the formulas. So on 116, the first um, entry, the only field that has a black item in it is carrying amount because that was the date that um, we received the cash. And so we received cash of 666633. Everything else would be blank. And the reason I've used other colors and shown formulas here is to indicate the way the formulas are going to look once we get into the future um, payment streams. So every time we pay interest, we're going to pay the stated rate, but divided by two. The reason we're dividing by two, of course, is because in our example, and again, we think it's true with most bonds, we're going to pay interest twice a year. So the whole year's interest rate is 12%. Um, the semi-annual interest rate is 6%, or 12% divided by 2. And we're going to multiply that by the face amount of 700000 So you can see cash interest is 42000 every time we pay it. Effective interest, though, is different. Because here we're taking the market value, which we determined is 14% right now, and we're dividing that by two, because again, the bond pays interest semi-annually, and we come up to a 7% um, semi-annual market rate, but the effective interest method requires us to multiply this by the carrying amount, not by the um, face amount. So you can see here we're gonna take 666,633, times uh, 7%, and we come up with this 46,664. So the amortization amount, the amount we're actually going to remove from um, discount, is the difference between 46,664, this is the effective interest, and the cash interest of 42,000. So we're going to amortize $4,644. This is going to raise the carrying amount to $671,297. Every six months, we're going to do a journal entry to record these things. I like to tell people in the accounting classes that no matter how complicated a spreadsheet ever is in accounting, this is true the whole way up to um, advanced accounting, 
you're always trying to figure out journal entries. That's why you do spreadsheets. So every single thing here, heading up to 1231.18, is a journal entry. Notice here, in every case, the increase in the carrying amounts going up, the effective interest rates going up, and that shouldn't surprise you, because the carrying amounts going up. And again, as we started with our discussion, the carrying amount heads towards 700,000. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not showing you the effective interest rate for um, amortizing a premium. It would operate much the same. You would have a um, spreadsheet that looked a lot like this. The only difference is the carrying amount in the premium starts higher than 700,000. And so as you're amortizing, you're reducing the premium amount and you're dropping the carrying amount towards 700,000. So again, the biggest difference is here, we're increasing the carrying amount until we get to 700,000 because it's a discount. But if it was a premium, we'd start higher than 700,000 and we'd be reducing the carrying amount until we got to 700,000. Well, just one more thing to show you, and that is, hopefully you either remember or you can go back and look at the um, spreadsheet that we just had. Remember I told you that every single entry on the spreadsheet represents a journal entry that we need to do. So you'd already seen the journal entry for January 1st, 2016, when we recorded the um, sale of the bond. On June 30th, 16, 2016, our first interest payment would be due. So look at how we record this. You can't credit interest, or you can't credit cash, I'm sorry, because you wouldn't credit interest, but you can't credit cash for anything more or less than what you pay. So that spreadsheet showed us that we pay $42,000 in cash. But as we determined from the effective interest method, that's not the appropriate amount of interest expense for accrual basis accounting. So we figured out on that last page that 46,664 is the interest expense. The discount then the, and which, which in this case is a reduction of the discount. Think about it. The discount was a contra liability with a debit account. This credit is going to make that discount even lower. But that's going to be the difference to get us from interest expense to cash. Now I want to come back here um, to the spreadsheet and point out one last thing. And that's the bottom. So we're plotting along every other semi-annual interest payment reducing the discount amount, bringing more of the discount into effective interest, and increasing the whole carrying amount. But notice at the very last entry, we no longer obey the formulas at the top. For the very last one only, we obey the formula fine for cash interest, but the important thing with the last payment is we could not have a carrying value lower or higher than 700000 so in this last one only, we have to go from the previous carrying amount to 700,000. And notice that's what this formula says. It says four minus three for that last period only, four being carrying amount column um, and um, three being increase in carrying amount. And that's a, that's a typo there. Let me correct that even as we speak. This should be a plus sign. Um, no, I, I take that back. This would be the plus, four plus three. This, uh, I'll leave as four minus three. Four, should have called it, this one should have been four minus old four. That would have been proper. That should have been four minus old four. And this is um, four, really, you could call it old four plus three. Um, effective interest is then old two plus three. This old two plus the new three. So this last time only, 
we have to balance out um, to, to um, amortize the remaining discount. Well, that's the effective interest method. And as always, give me a call, contact me, text me if you have questions about how to do this. Take care.